good, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, Akio-san. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Kotani-san, Derie, Gail, and Andre. Welcome to the Toyota Mobility Summit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Akio-san, could I ask you where you are? Is that your office? You are correct. Yeah. Actually, this is the first time the public has seen it. <laughs> well, <laughs> like it. well, could you give us a quick tour? Of course. <laughs> I have and sports, as you can see. Uh -huh. People call here as a museum, not the office. <laughs> yeah, um, it sure doesn't look like office to me. <laughs> right? I wanted to create an atmosphere mm -hmm. where visitors could relax and focus on discussion, rather than a place where people seek approval. Mm -hmm. I see. That's very kind of him, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well thank you. And um, let's talk about the interview. Uh, going back to last month in Tokyo, when I actually interviewed you, you mentioned the kinds of challenges Toyota is trying to overcome right now. It was really special and inspiring to hear what you had to say. Um, if you don't mind, I would like to few, add a few additional questions. Um, would that be all right? Of course. <laughs> of course, okay. <laughs> so, um, you have mentioned in the video that over the next 100 years, it will be important to make cars that are enjoyable. Um, it is also said that uh, the car industry is now facing a once-in-century era of great change. Uh, with that in mind, what do you think about the role cars should play in the mobility society over the next 100 years? Mm, no one knows the answer to these questions. Uh, but personally, what I am pretty sure about is that the future of mobility will be in the hands of those who really want to make society better. Mm -hmm. yeah. If we care about the future as a car company, we will be part of that future. Right. I think that's a very insightful thing to say. Um, is this related to what you said about not wanting to turn cars into commodities? Um, and it is related to what you said about cars being beloved. Because in Japanese, the word Aisha is used to refer to one's uh, beloved car. Isn't that right? You know, I love cars. <laughs> That's why we want to create ever better cars. Right. You know, these days, we hear a lot about technology changing the world. But no matter how advanced we became as a society, I want to keep creating mobility that inspires cars that you can love. I see. I think that um, this is related to the origins of Toyota. Toyota was founded 80 years ago with its roots in um, Toyota automated looms. And at that time, no one predicted that a company producing automated looms would go on creating vehicles. And uh, isn't that right? <laughs> yes, my grandfather, Kichiro Toyota, got together yep. with some colleagues. And together, they took on exactly the big challenge, making cars. And I believe that the, they had desires, a burning passion and a strong conviction that the car industry would be, the, would be vital to Japan's future. Um, I think Toyota's history has been a truly a story of challenges. Um, does this spirit live on in today's Toyota still? Uh, yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. Except uh, it's not just about Japan anymore, but the whole world. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm not a founder, I'm just a successor. I try to uphold that heritage as best as I can. So what is it that you have inherited? 
the passion to take up the challenge of creating a better future. That is Toyota's origin and our starting point for the future. I see. Uh, you mentioned that, the, that you played sports when you were young, and I know that you were a very good field hockey player and became an Olympic hopeful ahead of the uh, Moscow game. Um, what did you get from sports? There are many. many. Firstly, the speed of fair play. Secondly, for others, for the team. Mm -hmm. And finally, never give up. Mm. Toyota supports many sports teams in your company. Um, in fact, Toyota's history is also a history of sports, with a sports team, as you know. And I have heard that the a track and field sports team was formed in 1937, when Toyota itself was established. Uh, what do sports mean to Toyota? Uh, since the company was founded, mm -hmm. Toyota has experienced various difficulties. And whenever we went through times of trouble, sports have always been there to encourage us. Mm -hmm. The two teams, the old company and the sport team, have always been inseparable. They always push each other to continue uh, their path over that. I see. Um, I previously uh, held an interview covering an internal Ekiden Relay event that was back uh, last year. Uh, autumn or winter, I think. It was really cold. But um, in the event, eight runners hand over one sash over a distance of 30 kilometers, which is approximately 18 miles. And I was surprised to learn that it began in 1947. And also that last year was the 70th time for this event to be held, which is a milestone. I heard that 545 teams participated from all over the world, and that in total of 30,000 people were involved. Um, Akio-san, does this tell us something about what Toyota is all about? <laughs> Yes, you know many things about our <laughs> Yeah, 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 I was there the whole time. Our traditional Ekiden Relay race truly reflects the speed within Toyota. I am Toyota's 11th president, in other words, the 11th runner. Mm -hmm. A runner entrusted with one section of the race between Toyota's history and its future. Mm -hmm. That's how I see it. I see. It means that you're, the, you're running the company, <laughs> considering the next generation as well as subsequent ones after that. Um, does that link in with your 20-year commitment approach? Exactly. It is important to pass the button from the hand to hand and entrust the responsibility to your successor. Right. I think that Becoming a top um, Olympic and Paralympic sponsor gave you the opportunity to meet many athletes as well as the people supporting them. Um, could you um, introduce us to some of them, any of them? Uh, meeting with Paralympic swimmer, Mr. Junichi Kawai, he told me that he wanted to go out in a stylish car. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we should create a car that are stylish and that everyone, anyone can enjoy driving. Mm. I understand that he taught you that fun to drive applies to everyone. Um, did you meet anyone else? Mm. I also had the chance to go skiing with the Paralympic Alpine skier, Kuniko Obinata. At first, I was wondering whether I should offer her assistance. But I soon realized that she was actually a superhuman. This told me the importance of treating all people in the same way. Uh, everybody, could you give us uh, a hand? She's right there. <laughs> Yes, we had dinner last night and I really thought that she was a superhuman <laughs> as well. Okay. Um, uh, we let's go skiing together again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You should. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah. You will? Yeah. I do. Okay. Okay, Akio san, she's saying that she wants to go ski with you again. <laughs> yes, please. Please teach me how to ski. <laughs> The winter is coming. <laughs> yeah, she now has a microphone. You can speak yeah. directly. Okay. You should next next time you should try mono skiing, she skiing. Shall we? Shall we? What's that? Ah, uh, there's a she's difficult. She's sitting mono skiing. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, that's difficult. Okay. Technical. But I try to follow you. I try to follow you. Okay. Okay, back to our discussion. Um, we need to um, recognize the para-athletes actually view the, their disability as individuality and that they continue to push their limits as fighters. Is, isn't that right? Just like her, right? Uh, yes, exactly. I think that all people tend to set certain limits for themselves mm -hmm. and restrict themselves to a certain view of who they are. Do you have such an experience of your own, too? Actually, for a good part of my life, I've had the weight of the Toyota name heavily on me, with others telling me what I should be. But gradually, I came to see it as part of my individuality. I started to realize that there are things that only I can do, not because my name is Toyota, but because of who I am. Mm -hmm. And who I am and what I want to be. I want to keep pushing myself to serve someone other than myself. What I really wish is that the Olympics and Paralympic involvement of Toyota will act as an opportunity for everyone connected to Toyota. It doesn't matter if the executives, employees, suppliers, partners, even customers, mm -hmm. to exceed the limits they have set for themselves. Thank you. And um, today, Toyota unveils its first global Olympics and Paralympics campaign to encourage people to challenge their own impossible. Um, could you please introduce the main slogan of this campaign? Please? Yes. <laughs> I'm pleased to introduce Toyota's first ever global corporate initiative, Start Your Impossible. <laughs> which demonstrates the company's evolution to a mobility company. I believe when you are free to move, anything is possible. Let's start your impossible. Hi, Takio-san. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Andre and everyone, please enjoy your stay in Greece and inspiring stories from our guests. Thank you and good night.